Whitehall, 1212. This is Scotland Yard. For the first time in history, Scotland Yard opens its official files to bring you the true stories of some of its most baffling cases. These are the true stories, the plain, unvarnished facts, just as they occurred, reenacted for you by an all-British cast. Only the names of the participants have, for obvious reasons, been changed. The broadcasts are presented with the full cooperation of Scotland Yard. Research on Whitehall 1212 is finished by Percy Hoskins of the London Daily Express. The stories for radio are written and directed by Willis Cooper. The voice you will now hear is that of Chief Superintendent John Davidson, custodian of Scotland Yard's famous Black Museum. Good afternoon. Police officials from every part of the civilized world come to see us here at New Scotland Yard. Many of them are old friends of ours, of course. There are few enough police forces with whom Scotland Yard has not been in contact. The surety of France, the American FBI, Canada's famous RCMP. We're all enlisted in the war against crime. And as the Bible says, state chapter of Ecclesiastes, third verse, there is no discharge in that war. We have an interesting visitor with us today. He came to glance at the exhibits here in case number 202131. Uh, here, a doctor's instrument case and a pair of child's rompers. These, with certain other objects which were later given Christian burial, were important objects in that case. And our visitor is the man who had so much to do with solving the case, Captain Lionel Watt the former Chief Constable of Lancaster. I must tell you at once that this was a matter for the Lancaster Constabulary and the police of Dumfrieshire in Scotland. Purely, let us say, a, a local matter. No, Scotland Yard was not engaged in this case at all. Captain Watt and his people solved this most baffling case themselves. Yes, so suppose I'm able to discover we have only one procedure that's precisely like Scotland Yard's, John. And that is... We patronize the same hangman. Two miles north of the town of Moffat, which is in Dumfrieshire in Scotland, the main road from Carlisle to Edinburgh crosses the ravine where a small stream, Garden Home Lynn, runs to the River Annan through a remarkably peaceful countryside. On the morning of the 29th of September, some years ago, Several crudely wrapped bundles were observed lying on the banks of the ravine below the road. From one of the bundles protruded a naked human arm. The Dumfrieshire Constabulary naturally investigated. What they found added up to confusion as well as to horror. I was in the Moffat Police Station when their Sergeant Barnes made his first report. Four bundles, one wrapped in the Daily Herald, the London Labourite newspaper for 5th August this year. The second wrapped in a pillow slip, the third in a portion of cotton sheeting, and the fourth in another piece of sheeting, <coughs> tied up with what appears to be the hem torn from the sheet. All the bundles contained pieces of people to which straw was adhering, and a large quantity of cotton wool also. Quite neat. As nearly as we can tell, there are parts of at least two bodies. It's impossible at present to identify them, it's impossible even to determine the sex of the bodies or their approximate ages. By the appearance of the bodies, the medical officer thinks that they have been dead about two weeks, but he doesn't know for certain. He's uh, sorting them out now. During the week, other parcels were discovered along the course of Garden Home Lynn and along the banks of the River Annan, all on the Scottish side of the border, outside my bailiwick. These parcels, which also contained portions of human bodies, were wrapped in pages of the Sunday graphic for the 15th of September and in pages of other newspapers, unidentifiable because of bloodstains. I had a telephone call. Sergeant Barnes speaking at Moffat, sir. Oh, hello, Sergeant. What's up? We don't think our friends are Scottish, sir. What's that? 
Don't think they're Scottish. What, friends? What? what, what they're dead people, sir. The ones we found, we don't think they're Scottish folk. Well, that's quite a statement, Sergeant. When you can't even tell whether they're male or female. Well, sir, we've been making inquiries ever since the first parcel was found. And according to our records, there hasn't been anybody missing in Dumfriesshire in 11 years who's not accounted for. Well, that doesn't prove that... There was a carnival at Morecambe about two weeks before we found the... Uh, Well, now, what's that got to do with it? Well, I telephoned the Herald office in London, sir, and they printed a special edition of slip sheets with pictures of the Morecambe carnival. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. They printed uh, 5,370 copies, and it was all sold with a Sunday Herald of 15th September... Either in Morecambe, which is right alongside you, or in Lancaster, which is where you are, sir. Uh, Do you mind telling me what all this has got to do with your latest discovery, Sergeant? Oh, not at all, sir. I thought you'd understand. The latest discoveries was wrapped up in those special pages, sir. I at once put our people onto their missing persons lists to discover what missing persons had been reported about the 15th of September who had not yet been found. From Morecambe, sir. They've had nobody missing since September 11th, before season closed at Seaside. Uh, two persons, trippers from York, missing on that day, but bodies were recovered on following day. Both were drowned. That's all, sir. How about Lancaster? None unaccounted for within the specified period, sir. Unless you want to count this one, though she's not really missing. Who? Name, Maggie Rowlandson, maid servant. She's not been officially reported missing. But her stepfather's been around mumbling about a complaint. What about? Well, sir, it's one of them, their things. The girl went away with her mistress and they haven't come back, that's all. Where'd they go? Edinburgh, her husband says, sir. Oh, she's married. Mistress' husband. Well, tell him to make the wife send the girl back. I did, sir. And he wrote, but he hasn't had any reply yet. I gather the wife got fed up with him and walked out, taking the maid along for company. Huh. They'll be back. That all? That's all, sir. Well, keep on checking up on missing persons, though what can be done, I'm sure I don't know. No, sir. I think that sergeant over there at Moffat's is daft. Anyone could have got hold of a copy of that special edition of the Herald? Yes, sir. It's his affair. Let him work it out his way. We've plenty to do. Yes, sir. Well, thanks very much anyway. Keep your eyes open. Yes, sir. Oh, I say, uh, I suppose it is our job to check up on things. Uh, Yes, sir, that's right. Whether it makes much sense or not. Uh, What's this chap's name whose wife's gone? Well, I'll have a chat with him and see what can be done about getting this girl back to her parents. (laughs) Fat chance, I expect. Name's uh, Dr. John Hakim, sir. Two Dalton Square. Funny name. Mm, Hindu or Parsi or something, I think, sir. Uh, well, I'll go see the blighter on my way home. It's quite all right. Go ahead. Right, sir. What here? What here? Sir, this is Sergeant Barnes at Moffat over in Dumfriesshire. Hello, Barnes. We're almost certain now, sir, about the bodies. Certain? Well, well what did you find out? Well, sir, there's two professors of forensic medicine staying here at the hotel in Moffat. From Glasgow University, sir. Yeah. And they were invited to look at the remains. They and the medical officer here think they can be put them back together. Good. Then you'll be able to identify them. Well, they're not so sure about that, sir, seeing the condition of them. But what I called you about was to tell you you can narrow down whatever search you're making there. I was going to tell you I haven't found any persons missing here, so your theory is... Not missing persons, sir. What did you say? It's missing women. Women? Aye. The doctors are certain, sir. They were both women. I felt rather a fool about doing it. But my conscience, if that's who it was, kept mumbling in my ear about leaving no stone unturned, so... I stopped my car as near to the door of two Dalton Place as I could and went to call on Dr. John Hakim. The bell was apparently out of order. It was a good five minutes before my pounding on the door was answered. Uh, 
The doctor ain't home, sir. Oh, uh, isn't he? He's committing an operation on an impacted wisdom tooth, sir. Oh? Then he's a dentist. Licentiated Dentistry University of Bombay, sir. I thought he was a doctor. Bachelor of Medicine University of Lucknow, sir. He's an Indian. A Parsi, sir. Whatever that is. But he won't be back till quite late, so I'm not to take any appointments for him for the day. Are you the, uh... I'm the charwoman. Well, I'm very anxious to see the doctor. I'm Captain Watt. Mrs. Music. Mrs. Pamela Music. Huh? Who? That's my name, sir. Oh, oh. Well, I was quite anxious to see the doctor. Well, I'm in the doctor's confidence, sir. If there was anything... I am Chief Constable of Lancaster, Mrs. Music. Phew! What's he done, sir? Nothing, so far as I know. Well, then, what do you want to see him about? Well, I'm afraid that's my business and his, my dear madam. Madam, be I? You want to ask him about his wife, don't you, sir? I wonder if you could tell me anything about him. I'm afraid that's his business and mine, my dear sir. <laughs> uh, will you tell the doctor, please, that I'd be glad if he'd get in touch with me at the town hall, my office? Has Mrs. Iron Mighty Dr. Akeem been making trouble? Why should she make trouble? Oh, well, she's made plenty before. No, it's not my affair, I'm sure. What's she want now, sir? I'm afraid I shall have to discuss that with the doctor. If you'll be good enough to tell him that I call, please. Yes, sir. Uh, would you know where Mrs. Hakim is at present? I do not. Does the doctor know? Well, of course he knows. And do you know if Maggie Rowlandson is with her, the maid? Well, I know she should be right here, doing her share of this work, the lazy... Well... How long has she been gone? <clears throat> oh, since that Sunday the carnival at Morecambe closed. The 15th the... of September. I think it was. They'd been to Morecambe that Saturday night for the last day of it. Mrs. Harkin and, and the, the maid. doctor told me when I come to work on Monday that Mrs. had walked out on Sunday morning, taking Maggie with her. This is the longest time she's been away. Oh, this has happened before, eh? Where does, where does she usually go? Uh, she's got a sister in Edinburgh. She visits What's her name? Mrs. Alexander MacArthur. Darling Edie. She's a twin of Mrs. Hakeem, and I don't like her. Poor dear doctor. I hope she don't never come back this time. You'll be better off. Why? Nag and nag and nag. And her uh, that used to be a barmaid right here in town before he met her. Had him eating his heart out for her. Oh, well, you'll excuse me, sir, but I've got to get back to work. I'll tell the doctor you called, but don't you tell him what I've said now, mind you, sir. Here now, give us a hand with this carpet before you go, huh? Express message dispatched to the Edinburgh Police by Chief Constable Lionel Watt of Lancaster. Most urgently request you make contact with Mrs. Alexander MacArthur, Edinburgh, requesting having her sister, Mrs. Jan Hakim, of this city, get in touch with me at once. Also discover whether Mrs. Hakim's maidservant, Maggie Rowlandson, is there with her. Information most urgently desired. Watt, Chief Constable Lancaster. Sergeant Barnes of Moffat telephoned me. Sergeant Barnes here, sir. Oh, good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, sir. Did you have any luck? We found two women who seemed to be missing. Yes, Sergeant, but further inquiry has discovered them for us. They're visiting in Edinburgh, that's all. You had any luck? Those two professors I told you about, sir, they seem quite delighted with what they've accomplished. Putting the bodies back together. Bodies? You should have seen them, sir. I did, thanks. Any clues? They said one of the bodies was a young woman. The others older, about 35, Dr. Fairley said. One of them had red hair, the young one, he said. Red hair? Yes, sir. And there's a part of the upper left forearm of the younger one that can't be found. What's that mean, Barn? Well, Dr. Fairley thinks there was some kind of identifying mark. Oh. Uh, a scar uh -huh. or something. And the murderer, whoever he was, was smart enough to remove it. Real neat. Professional job, too, sir. Just as neat as if a doctor or a surgeon had done it. Dr. Fairley says. Come in. Dr. Hawkins, sir. What? Dr. Hawkins here. Oh. 
I have him come in, please. What do you say, sir? I've got a visitor, Barnes. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Well, sir. You are Chief Constable Watt, isn't it? I am, sir. I want to know I want to know what you mean, sir, by persecuting me. Answer me. Why, my dear sir, nobody's persecuting you. You have appeared at my office in my absence making inquiries, which I am resenting very much indeed. And I demand that they be stopped. My dear man. I am a reputable doctor, sir, a surgeon. I will not have policemen coming to my office. I came to your home, sir. It is also my office and surgery. You are thinking that I have some guilty knowledge of my wife's whereabouts and that little Rundy, her maid, isn't it? There's no call to be quite so belligerent, Dr. I Martin. shall be as belligerent as I please, sir, when my rights are invaded. Uh, now, uh, look here, Dr. Hakim. I am not going to be uh, put on the defensive uh, by you, you at all. You, you may as well understand that. Now, I'm sure that you're aware that I'm following up a legitimate inquiry concerning the whereabouts of your maid, Maggie. You Rose. have no right to question my servant. My dear sir, I have a right to question anyone who might be able to contribute information. You know that that Mrs. Musical talk. I am it, 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 not it, it, acquainted with Mrs. Music's proclivity, sir. Now that you are here in my office, I ask you what information you can give me about the Rowlandson woman. I can give you none. She accompanied my wife to Glasgow. Probably she is still there with her. I thought you said that your wife went to Edinburgh. Uh, Edinburgh, I mean. I can't keep these stupid Scottish, the, the English, these, these Scottish, I can't remember them. I see. Has your wife left you, Doctor? I will not tell you. You have a reason for refusing to answer, I take it. I have. You will be telling it all over the city and my practice will be ruined. I know how you police operate. I don't trust you. That's a very extraordinary attitude to take, It is Doctor. the attitude which I choose to take. You will stop meddling with my affairs, sir. Look here, uh, Dr. Hakim. I... I Dr. Hakim. I... I have no interest for the moment in the reasons for your wife's having left you, but... I'll tell you why she left me. She left me for another man. I said I have no interest in her reason, sir, at the moment. I'm being disgraced. I am being ruined by this scandal. My practice, I should be ruined. And now you please come around so that all the neighbors may see. It is inexcusable. Oh, control yourself, sir. I, I, I'm interested in finding Maggie Rowlandson for her parents. She is with my wife in Glasgow, Edinburgh. Is she? Of course I told you so. Now, will you do something to end this persecution? I've told you there is no persecution, Doctor. <gasps> will you put a notice in the papers that I had nothing to do with my wife's leaving me? Will you swear? Oh, you're being silly, Doctor. No, no, you are ruining my practice. I don't believe so, I Doctor. demand that you give out a statement to the public that I know nothing at all about this. Except that you know where your wife and Miss Rowlandson are. <laughs> will you give me a statement, sir? Dr. Hakim, Dr. Hakim, when I'm thoroughly convinced that you have no connection with either your wife's going away, nor of Miss Rowlandson's unexplained departure... I had nothing to do with either of them. My wife left me and took Maggie with her. When, when I'm thoroughly convinced of that, Doctor, I'd be glad to say so to any of your patients, present or prospective, that you care to how, send me. How dare Until you... Until then, if I need you, I shall send for you. Good day, sir. You are persecuting me because I am an Indian, isn't it? You are being offensive, sir. I, you, you think you are a great big superior Englishman and so on. Yes, Therefore, sir. you can say... What do you want? Sergeant, show Dr. Hakim the exit, please. Yes, sir. Will you come this way? I will not come this way. I want justice. I will stay here until... All right, all right, all right. I'm coming. You're bigger than I am. You're English. You're, you're exit fully... this way, sir. Oh, ratty little Bruce. Oh... Hello. Put me through to Sergeant Barnes over in Moffat in Dumfriesshire, if you please. Quite. Dumfriesshire is in Scotland. Right. Oh, he's gone, sir. Oh, excuse me, sir. I, I had this express message for you when you rang for me. Yeah. From Edinburgh. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, I wait. Edinburgh. Barnes here. Oh, oh, Sergeant Barnes, what here? I was just calling to tell you that... First of all, have you heard anything more in the way of clues? You were starting to tell me. Just that we found that one of the pieces of the body, sir, was wrapped up in a pair of child's rompers, sir. Rompers? Yes, sir. 
The other parts were wrapped up in old papers, old rags, a bit of sheeting. But this, it appears to be a part of a left leg, was wrapped up in these kids' rompers. That's all. So if that'll help, uh, what did you find out, sir? Well, I had this chap in here and a remarkably unpleasant little man. He confirms that both of our so-called missing women are safe in Edinburgh. So I'm afraid that your Lancaster theory rather collapses. Oh, that's too bad, sir. I had great hopes of you taking this off her hands. No, I think not. As a matter of fact, I've just had an express message from the Edinburgh Police. I'll read it to you. Half a sec. Uh, Chief Constable, etc., etc., that's me. Uh, uh, oh. What do they say, sir? Well, I'm afraid I gave it back rather too quickly, Sergeant. You what, sir? And here's the message from Edinburgh. Subject person has been contacted. Says has not seen subject of inquiry, Mrs. Hakeem, since last New Year's Day in Lancaster. <laughs> has never seen subject, Maggie Rowlinson. Hodson, oh, that's Edinburgh, right. please. Oh, what'd you say, Sergeant? I said, I wish you luck, sir. <laughs> raining quite hard when I arrived, full of beans, at the door of number two Dalton Square to demand explanations from the little doctor. I thumped the door vigorously, and after a suitable period of time, it opened. The doctor I did. Oh, it's you, Constable. Where is he, Mrs. Mearsy? Out, sir. Call it on patience. He certainly did give me what for. May I come in out of the rain, please? Oh, if you must, Thank sir. You. Wipe your boots on the mat. It's mucky enough in here anyways, though Lord knows I try to keep it tidy. What do you want now? She ain't here. Neither one of them's here. Neither Mrs. Hakeem nor Maggie, what's her name, Rollinson? Nor the doctor. Now, what did you want, sir? He ain't here. Very important that I see him. Where do you expect I might find him? Or uh, when will he be back? That's the way I got into trouble the other day, answering questions. Now, look here, Mrs. Music. He says it ain't good for business. He said if I'd done it again, I'd lose my situation, and I'm not going to lose my situation. If you'll just tell me when the doctor will be back, Mrs. Music. He'll be back tonight. He's going to have tea with the children. What children? Oh, no, no, me how it's raining. Well, that'll be good for the carpet. Carpet? Oh, now, you do ask questions, don't you? What children? The doctors. They're staying with Dr. Mattoon and his wife since the missus went away. That's why the carpets are soaking in the rain. Mrs. Music, will you please... To wash the blood out of them. What blood? It's been on them ever since the day she went away. And I don't know any way to get it out, so I'm soaking them in the rain. And the... Whose blood? Whose blood is it, uh, I mean? There was blood all over the surgery and on the stair carpet. You helped me with the stair carpet yesterday, for which I thank you, sir. Whose blood? Huh? <laughs> blood ain't no treat around here, sir. The doctor's always cutting people up, committing operations and all. Whose blood, I say? Oh, you needn't yell at me. I can hear all right. Why, his, of course. His? The doctor's? Of course. How did his blood get on? When I come to work that Monday morning, he told me the missus had run away from him, so he took the kids to stay with Mrs. Matt, too, like I said before. And when he come back, he tried to open a tin of peaches for his breakfast, and he cut his hand dreadful on the tin opener. Didn't you see he was still bandaged up? Yes, yes. There was blood every place in the house. On the rug, on his waistcoat. Oh, on... uh, he bled a lot. Hey, you wouldn't think one person could bleed so much and still walk about. Uh, who dressed his hand? He dressed it himself. Wouldn't he, he wouldn't even let me put Zambuk on it. He's very accomplished, sir. Oh, dear me. What's the matter? Oh, I knowed he'd forget to take them. You see? What are those things? Oh, I told him he'd forget them. Now, what are those poor kiddies going to do with them? What are they? Rompers! Don't you recognize rompers? Haven't you got any kiddies? I told him to take them. Whose are they? All except that one pair that belonged to young Alan. I don't know how anybody could lose a pair of rompers. Is there a telephone here, Mrs. Mas Music? In the surgery there, but I'm not sure the doctor... Here's would... half a crown. Say nothing about it. Here, yeah, well, bar music, that red bow tie you've been wanting. In here, Mrs. Music? It's his birthday Wednesday. What'd you say? Oh, yes, it's in there, sir. Thank you. Uh, one more question, Mrs. Music. What colour hair did Maggie Rowlandson have? Had, sir? Well, she's got ginger hair. 
Real bot red. Thank you, Mrs. Music. This is Chief Constable Watt. Put me through to Sergeant Barnes at the Moffat Police Station. Quickly, do you hear? It was 8 o'clock in the evening when Sergeant Barnes arrived at 2 Dalton Place. I'd urged Mrs. Music to wait. Come in, Barnes, I said. Did you bring them? Yes, sir. They're right here. What on earth? Know what these are, Mrs. Music? Well, of course I do. Where'd you get them all bloody like this? Ugh. Is there blood on everything? What are they? Why, they're little Alan's rompers that was locked. How do you know? Well, well right there. The, the patch I sewed on myself out of Music Sanderson Gingham shirt. Of course I know. Where'd you get them? Oh, why, Miss Maggie Rowlandson had them. Oh, well, there's the doctor. At last. You gentlemen, you can... Mrs. Music, are you here? Yes, sir, I'm here. I'm here also, Dr. Hakim. Now, what are you wanting in my house? You... I want to see you, sir. And may I know who you are, please? I'm Sergeant Barnes of the Dumfrieshire Constabulary, sir. I want to see you, too. Now, look here. What is this? They what... found little Alan's rompers oh. that was lost, Doctor. Oh. Aren't you glad? No, I don't think he's very glad, Mrs. Music. Doctor, may I look at that bandaged hand where you cut it on the tin opener and where you bled so profusely? Stand away from me. Stand away from me, I tell you. Hold his hand, Barnes. Yes, sir. No, don't, don't, don't touch my hand. Let on, go. I'll be quite go gentle, Doctor, but I've got to get that bandage off. There's no blood here. Now, there. Look, Barnes. Yes, sir. What? Let me see. Wait. Why, there ain't any cut on that hand. Well, where did all the blood come from, then? Yes, Doctor. Where did all the blood come from? Johangel, Sorabi, Hakim, alias Dr. John Hakim, I arrest you for the murder of your common-law wife and of Maggie Rowlandson. And I warn you that anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be used in evidence. He admitted it, finally. He had murdered his wife in a fit of insane rage when he discovered that she had met, quite innocently, incidentally, the man of whom he was insanely jealous, though without any cause whatever. The maid, Maggie Rollinson, was killed in an attempt to defend her mistress. In one day, the murders had been committed on Saturday night. He had dissected the bodies, removed all means of identification and at night had scattered the neatly wrapped parcels containing the bodies from the bridge on the Edinburgh Road. The two professors from the university were able to reassemble the mangled bits to such an extent that there was no question of their identity at last. Dr. Hakim, which was not his name, was tried for murder at Manchester Assizes and found guilty. He was hanged at Strangeways Prison three weeks later. The same hangman who works for Scotland Yard officiated... Heard in the order of their appearance on Whitehall 1212 today were Harvey Hayes, Horace Braham, Pat O'Malley, Lester Fletcher, Patricia Courtley, and Morris Delamore, Lionel Rico speaking. Whitehall 1212 is written and directed by Willis Cooper. <laughs> As individuals, we can't solve all of the problems of international strife and tension. But as individuals, we can declare ourselves on the side of friendship and goodwill. The best way to express your goodwill is through CARE, C-A-R-E, the nonprofit international organization that delivers food and clothing packages to the needy in other lands. For complete information, get it at CARE offices throughout the nation. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>